Beer with Buffy is a retro analytical love roast of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. If you'd like to support our show financially, you can find us on patreon.com slash beer with Buffy. Don't forget to review us on iTunes if you like what you hear. I was told you were coming. The big bag is back. This time... I'm not sure I'm getting the clearance to come into the initiative. I've been thinking about the world. Jeez. Like vampires. Take a stand and say that. Fucking fantastic. I love that sound. Uh, the ice cream bar is this one. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here today on Beer with Buffy. I'm Josh. I'm Rex. And on today's episode of Beer with Buffy, Rex and I will be reviewing Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Season 4, Episode 11. It is titled Doomed, which has nothing to do with the video game or the movies. Which, by the way, I only recently discovered that... Or current events. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> neither here nor there, Rex. Irregardless. <laughs> but yeah, there's a new fucking Doom video game. I mean, it's already like four years old, but it's new to me. <laughs> and a, a movie, because we really needed another one. And this time it's not starring The Rock. Anyway, go watch it. It's on Netflix. It's awful. <laughs> In other news, we have a new caller. A new caller. I know. It's really soon. Almost <laughs> too soon. <laughs> but fuck it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to play our new caller's voicemail. Her name is Amanda. Hi, guys. Uh, hi, Josh and Rex. Uh, my name is Amanda. I've caught up on every episode. The holiday drought was a little hard to get through because I listen to you guys while I'm working. I have to stop myself from laughing out loud because I kind of work in a quiet office. Whatever. I'm adapting because you guys are fucking hilarious. I just recently listened to Hush and Something Blue. They are quite hilarious, especially with Spike because who doesn't love Spike? I do. Much more of a Spike fan than a broody angel fan. If you guys weren't aware, the lead gentleman is played by Doug Jones. And he is an actor that has been around for a very long time. Billy Butcherson in Hocus Pocus, Pam's Labyrinth, Hellboy, fantastic actor, loved the gentleman. When Giles was giving his presentation and everybody was making all the obscene gestures, and if you guys noticed, Anya, back a couple rows, eating popcorn, like it was the fucking movie theaters. Love Anya, she's hilarious. About Willow and Tara meeting for the first time. And how you guys said it was a little soon for Tara to say that Willow was special. So what if this was kind of one way of Josh foreshadowing how powerful Willow will become? Because throughout their relationship, Tara always realizes how much more powerful Willow is, even compared to her. I think that's why it becomes an issue for her later down the road, maybe foreseeing that it could grow. And as it started to grow, then she really realized, oh, shit, you know, and maybe just tried to be the good little Jimmy Cricket on her shoulder. But I just wanted to call back and let you guys know you guys are doing great. I can't wait to listen to the rest of your podcast and your ale with Angel once you get to it. Well, maybe you guys should consider alcohol with Angel. That way you can get through some of his broodiness. You guys are funny on the whiskey. Keep it up. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much for introducing yourself out of the gate. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah, Crystal, I think you've you've already got some competition. Like, every time we give away the <laughs> slot for the call-in segment, somebody's like, hold my beer. <laughs> I need to steal this slot. And around and around we go. Yeah. And eventually Fred will come back and he'll try to reclaim his throne and it'll all just turn into a big WWE clusterfuck. Yeah, eventually we'll just have to throw a ladder in the mix. And a folding chair and a kiddie pool full of pudding. Well, no, you don't need that. Jello? No, just a ladder match. You do know what a ladder match is, right? I, is it where they swing ladders at each other? No, it's where they hang the belt above the fucking ring. And there's ladders around, and they have to climb a ladder to get to the belt. But every time one of them gets to the top of the ladder, another fucking wrestler kicks the goddamn ladder out from under him. That sounds really painful. 
It probably is. Huh. Like even choreographed. That yeah. Sounds like just not a good way to go about that. Sounds like a good way to get impaled. I really enjoyed ladder matches when I watched wrestling. Interesting. That explains so much about you. I was young and dumb once. <laughs> once? Yes, once. You're still young, Rex. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hey, I turned 36 in a couple months. Yeah, me too, in a couple more months. But, you know, as long as the boomers keep infantilizing our entire generation, we'll never grow up. Whee! Yay! Whee! Oh, sorry, we were talking about you, Amanda. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> this is about me, okay, Amanda? Where do you get the balls to call into my show, on my podcast, on my internet, and tell me about your problems. Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry you missed us for the holiday drought, but it also fills me with glee <laughs> that you missed us. Gives, yeah. me, gives me all the warm fuzzies. Exactly. Yeah. It's like I ate a bunch of tribbles. Oh, oh my. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, I don't think you'd want to eat tribbles. They're born pregnant and they just breed in the... Tribbles everywhere. You, yeah, you, you'd never have to eat again. It's perfect. No, I think it'll just pop. I mean, I wasn't doing anything anyway. <laughs> and of course you love Spike, Amanda. Everybody fucking loves Spikey Spike. Angel does have his place, though. Yes. If I had to choose a favorite, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I would just set it up so that they eventually have to fight each other in an epic standoff battle. Yeah. Like they do later in Angel. Spike is my favorite, but... Spike's your favorite to love to hate, and Angel's your favorite to wank off to. I get it. It's cool, man. No, it's kind of the other way around. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that was... <laughs> um, Yeah, Doug Jones. We didn't really get to talk about him a lot last episode. We should have, because he yeah. was epic. Yes. And I was, I was fairly certain that, yeah, his smile in that, that's actually the yeah. actual shape of his mouth i'm sure he had fake teeth in or something or like veneer kind of things yeah some sort of teeth work going on there but other than that that's just his smile and in the other scene where they do the actual golf claps which we named the episode for that we also didn't get to talk about thanks for bringing it up there were those other three guys in the background and they've just got these big latex plaster type um halloween mask smiles going on which i didn't think were as creepy oh no they just looked like not. makeup to definitely me definitely not as creepy but yeah no he was amazing and i did not know that he was in hocus pocus or he was so he was in pan's labyrinth right yes what he was the dude without eyes that puts the eyes in his hands i don't know i'm pretty sure that's who he was because nobody else is that fucking lanky this guy was right? lanky as shit Pan's Labyrinth is one of those movies that I really have like tried rewatching multiple times, but I struggle with subtitles, and they never they never did a dubbed version of. Oh, Pan's it Labyrinth. wasn't in English, was it? I no, it's about just that. in Spanish, and I struggle with subtitles. So uh, it's one of those movies that I want to fucking love, but I just can't really truly get into it with the subtitles. But. Yeah, it, the movie just didn't do it for me. I mean, it was okay. I liked the aesthetic. It had nothing to do with the subtitles. I just felt like the story didn't meet its potential yeah, maybe on to the next topic uh amanda yeah i think we focused too much on it being in a romantic sense that she meant it and not necessarily in a magical way i i think it was very much both but i think you're you're right that she was sensing her innate power and not just oh you're special to me because you like me and you talk to me like a human being no i i really just think that tara has good gaydar <laughs> she saw it coming before the rest of us she sure did see it coming <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think she does have powerful potential to grow <laughs> she has a powerful lady boner and a half mast jiminy cricket in her pants oh god <laughs> anybody nobody oh no that's that's Old a bit callback. too inappropriate it's a, it's a reference to my own joke from like a season ago or something. I don't fucking remember. Willow obviously doesn't have a penis or crickets in her pants. No, on, honestly, honestly, I think you're <laughs> onto something, Amanda, with, with your insight on Tara sensing something in Willow's power. 
And we did focus more on the romantic aspect of it, but... Well, I mean, ever since Oz left, she kind of does have crickets in her pants. Kind of. Because she's not getting any. <laughs> chirp, chirp, <laughs> chirp. Is this thing on? Hello. <laughs> you know, there's two reasons I laugh in this podcast. One is you're funny. The other is I'm just... A, I'm highly inappropriate. <laughs> Anyway, so Ale with Angel, we kind of already covered that last episode, but I appreciate that you want us to exclusively drink hard liquor. I do too, but it's very expensive. <laughs> and it's much harder to get through a whole recording with liquor. Yeah, it, well, I mean, eh, getting too drunk at all. I don't know, alcohol with Angel just doesn't have the same ring to it. I was thinking maybe liquor with Angel, but liquor, I hardly knew her. <laughs> hey Oh, I slay me. Yep. On Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've never actually talked about that on the podcast, but I know. Um it's our little inside joke. Rex basically fancies himself the Al Borland to my Tim Allen, which I take great offense to because fuck you Tim Allen and everything about your existence. <laughs> He's from our state. We're sorry. He actually went to school in our city. I know. And he's a douche. Yeah. We never, it's not like we met him or anything. Not that he'd remember if he did, because he's a douche. And I have absolutely no fear of repercussions. Talking poorly of Tim Allen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Zero fear. Fun, fun fact for all you fans who do not live in Michigan. Um, all the Michigan like commercials for like how great our state is are narrated by tim allen oh god are they yes i didn't even know pure michigan oh <laughs> ruined anyway we need to get on with the show i am ruined for all the other cats it's time for a mom synopsis a mom synopsis yes joshua what are you doing joshua oh just living vicariously through the catharsis of spike's reclaimed virility <laughs> Stop using big words, Joshua. <laughs> so what's going on with Riley? When did he get so broody? Well, uh, I know the shtick is to call you out on not paying attention to the episode and then asking annoying questions that you should already know the answer to. But in this case, right now, he just right now got to be so fucking broody. God Damn it, Mama, don't you know how <laughs> broody Riley is? No, Joshua, I, I don't. <laughs> Fucking God damn it, Buffy, don't you see how broody Riley is? Nobody sees anything how you see it, Joshua. <laughs> You're a very special boy. And handsome. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so on today's episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, we follow up right where we left off on Hush with Buffy and Riley trying to talk about their shit and uh, not really getting a whole lot of give and take on either end. But she does tell him that he's the Slayer. He's never even heard of the Slayer. And he does admit to being part of the initiative although he doesn't call it that but she's basically already figured that out anyway and he's like yeesh i'm supposed to be super secret blah 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 willow's at a party she finds a body turns out it was a heinous atrocity committed by a demon that's i don't even know why he was there uh, was it to oh it was to drain the guy's blood because they need to collect dead man's blood a child's bones and the word of volius we'll get into Voilus. it some sort of talisman. Turns out Giles is actually currently in possession of this talisman and has completely forgotten about it. They show up. They whoop his ass. They go to Sunnydale High School and we get a big throwback episode. It's kind of the main theme of the whole episode is back to high school because Willow's upset about being called a nerd by Percy who shows up at the party. And they take Spike with them so that he won't commit suicide because everybody loves to hate Spike, but nobody's willing to admit that they would miss him if he was gone. 
<laughs> Spike ends up getting to throw down during the fight, and he is back, and he is a fucking animal, self-proclaimed. They defeat the demons before they're able to open up the Hellmouth and bring about the end of the world again. Ladies, gentlemen, spiny-headed little creatures. As soon as the sun goes down, down, down. Like you said, cold open to the exact moment we left our heroine. You need to keep better track of where you left your heroine, Rex. I said heroine. That too. Heroines are people too. You really yeah, should not I left just... her in her dorm. She's in the same place she was last time. Oh, you meant Buffy. Yes. Okay. You're confusing. We're not talking about illicit drugs? No. No. Oh. We start off right where we left off with them... Sitting in their dorm, staring at each other on opposite sides of the, the room. And Buffy says, somebody should speak before one of them graduates. <laughs> I see what she did there. Yes. Yeah, so she's like, let me guess, super secret military demon squad? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, well, I'm the Slayer. You got me. And he's like, huh? He's like, what are you? And she's like, Ex fucking excuse me? <laughs> Capricorn on cusp. <laughs> Jackass. <laughs> que pasa? To be fair, though, his his follow-up is like, no, look, you're like super fast and super strong and tough as fucking hell. Like, are you human? Hey, I thought it was a legit question. Yeah. I'm right on, on board with you there. So, no, she's like, no, I'm the chosen one. She who hangs out in graveyards a lot. And I'm like, oh, come on. If he hasn't even heard of the Slayer, he's not going to know that you spend that much time in graveyards. But we get it. Yeah. I'm kind of a little surprised he hasn't heard of the Slayer. Yeah, seriously. Because obviously Forrest has later, but whatever. Anyway, so he's like, okie doke. That's very interesting. Well, mum's the word, right? You know, don't tell anybody that I'm super secret military badass. And I won't tell anybody that you're the Slayer or whatever. And they, they agree to take some time to mull things over. Yeah. And Riley's just about to leave when an earthquake hits. Because Amy starts going, Wee! Yeah. Wee! Apparently, Amy Rat can predict earthquakes. Yeah. I wonder if rats can actually predict earthquakes. I mean, the lore seems to be that most animals start acting really strangely just before something like that happens. Or at least in movies. Right. <laughs> it's definitely the trope. The trope yes, is the that. trope. There it is. So foreboding Buffy is foreboding. She's like, oh, no, shit's going down. I'm like, you're in fucking California. Right. But as she says later, the last earthquake, she died. Yeah. So she absolutely has the right to feel anxious about it, which is the exact conversation she's having with Giles right now. But before that, cut to Spander's erotica basement. <laughs> God. <laughs> Uh, I mean, these guys are an old fucking married couple already. Right. Clean like, the house. I, fix the leak. I hate your guts. You're a moocher. Yeah, I'd murder you if I didn't have this bloody chip in my head. You know, just like every other right relationship out there. I had that conversation they, just earlier today. James Marsters and Nicholas Brendan, as actors, have impressively good fucking comedic chemistry. Yeah. Like, they work really well off each other. Well, this whole show, that's been, I think, easily Nicholas Brendan's most impressive quality is his comedic timing. And, I mean, he can't directly be blamed for the cringiness of his character. He didn't write no. his lines. Yeah. And I doubt they improv anything in this goddamn show. Seems unlikely. I mean, I'm sure they had banter sessions, and perhaps it was incorporated if writers or joss himself overheard some things that he liked but i don't think he needed any help right. to come up with witty shit xander's trying to get spike to do some work because xander has to go to work and spike doesn't like being told what to do <laughs> and he attempts to beat xander upside the head with a wrench but gets a headache well that's pretty I, much that <laughs> one of my quotes of the day here uh spike's like do i look like a plumber to you xander says no, you look like a big mooch that doesn't lift a finger around here, but I have to get to work, Spike replies. Oh, yeah, delivering melted cheese on bread, doing your part to keep America constipated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm lactose intolerant, so 
I feel personally attacked by this relatable content. <laughs> and, uh, and Spike tries to murder Xander. Not a big deal. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Cut back to Buffy's dorm where Willow comes in and says that she was almost buried under a bunch of books in the library. Hey, I was in the library during the quake. Almost got buried under some 19th century literature. And I don't have to tell you how hard it is to dig through some of that stuff. Ha <laughs> ha. Very oh, punny. Yeah. Very I love punny. It. I love it. Yeah. God, I love puns. <laughs> I love puns so much. Buffy's is like, uh, everything's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Willow's known this woman way too fucking long to not know that something is really fucking up. But yeah, Buffy not fucking telling Willow that what's up. Buffy does this way too fucking much. It's starting to get on my nerves. Just fucking talk to somebody. Just voice the shit going on in your head and stop holding it all in and just brooding about it. I know. It's not that easy, though. That's her ongoing struggle. What are you going to do? We all have our fucking therapy. (laughs) (laughs) We all have our cross to bear. But yeah, therapy, always a good option. Definitely not something that you should ever feel ashamed of. If you need help, give us a call here at Beer with Buffy at 269-743-0783. We are not legally or medically qualified to do anything for you, but we will make fun of you on the air. Oh, God. (laughs) Anyway, cut to Giles' place. (laughs) Oh, I tried to move on. I just tried to move on, but no. You, You just can't let it happen. (sighs) <sighs> oh god i don't want to make fun of people for struggling with mental health issues only if they find it <laughs> cathartic this is consensual fun making okay okay you know like we normally do okay it'll be fine i promise all right <laughs> <sighs> good sports only <laughs> thank you very much okay so at giles's place Buffy's is obviously worried about the quake, and she states, the last time we had an earthquake, I fucking died. And remember the earthquake we had in Michigan? Yes. I think that was one of my favorite memes. There was a picture of a lawn chair that had fallen over, and the caption was, the Michigan earthquake of 2016, we will rebuild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a weird thing, because there's no faults in, in Michigan. It, I can't remember what they said it was, but it was a specific kind of earthquake that doesn't require a fault line. Huh. But I I just remember it fucking woke me up from a goddamn nap. <sighs> and I was not happy about that. You should sue that earthquake. Yeah. Goddamn. I will get maybe rubble. <laughs> maybe a pretty rock or two. I think that's being overly optimistic, Rex. <laughs> Well, I I am the optimist in this working relationship. Absolutely. (laughs) I think you just need to cut your losses and move on, though, bud. Anyway, Giles, true to form, is overly dismissive of Buffy's foresight. And he's really trying to fucking talk about the initiative. And Buffy is very blatantly trying to distract him from talking about the initiative. Yeah, because she knows more than he does now, but promised Riley that she wouldn't say anything. And I'm like, come on, you're going to end up telling Giles eventually. Why even bother? Yup. Dig this. Dig this. Sire has a wings. Sire beheading. Hurry up, sweet dreams. Sunlight. Hurry up, sweet dreams. And water. Usual. Oh, yeah. I hit him. With what? A desk. Cut to the initiative. Yeah, where. Riley's asking Forrest about the Slayer, and Forrest suspects that the Slayer is just some myth. A boogeyman, something they tell their little spawn to make them eat their vegetables and clean up their slime pits. Yeah. Fairly decent quote from Forrest there. Yeah. Because we don't get too many out of him. No, not really. Uh, (laughs) And he also thinks that demons are just animals. That's why they're all acting funny about the earthquake. And then they fight this demon that they just passed in the hallway. And he's like, see, just animals. And I'm like, that's just really stupid. But okay. The one thing I got from this is if your main defense against demons 
is a fucking syringe and like a serum or whatnot in the syringe. Mm-hmm. Why, A, is the syringe not preloaded with the serum? Yeah. And B, why is it in like a normal syringe and not like an easy to apply like fucking applicator? A hypo. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely should have like cattle prods full of the shit around every yeah, corner. Exactly. Like, like for fuck's sake, especially the assholes in lab coats escorting the fucking guy. Yeah. I, I thought it was kind of funny that they walked right past him and didn't even flinch. And he didn't do any of that. Uh, like rrr, as he walked by and I was like that that seemed really weird that absolutely nothing happened just now as they walked past a demon yeah and then I was like okay now shit's going down all right things are normal cool well as normal as they can be in Sunnydale <laughs> yeah you know which is the implication for fuck's sake Rex and so then we cut to the party which we actually did not mention in the previous scene with Willow and Buffy They were talking about going to a party. So Willow in this scene, the part of Willow has been recast and will be played by a turtle because she's awkward. (laughs) Oh, she hardcore quickly reverts back to high school Willow. Not even like high school, high school Willow, like early high school Willow, like season one, meek, shy, awkward Willow. Yeah. And then she runs into Percy, which makes everything so much better. (laughs) Because of all the people she knew in high school, the one who, like, treated her the most shitty at first anyway, was this fucking guy. We all remember Percy. Yeah, up until until her doppelganger vampire nearly ate him. Yeah, Villow fucked him up, and he was like, oh, I'm so sorry, Miss Willow. I love you now. Don't kill me. But he's trying to impress his extremely insecure girlfriend, and she can't even let him so much as exchange a brief pleasantry with another girl without getting extremely uncomfortable and dragging him to the other side of the house. Have you ever been in a relationship with someone like that? Yes. I have once. It did not last very long. Yeah, that's not healthy, guys. Don't do that. And gals. Yeah. Don't be so fucking possessive of your of your spouses or partners or whatever you want to fucking call them. Yeah, I meant guys as, you know, an all-around, basically gender-neutral term. Like, dude. Eh. I mean, if you don't like being called dude, great. I, I won't. But I use it as a gender-neutral term. It's just toxic fucking relationships. Fucking stop it. Seriously, guys. People. Women. Folks. 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 Fuckers. Seriously, fuckers. <laughs> knock it off. <laughs> The hosts at Beer with Buffy fucking said so. Knock it the fuck off. Peer pressure's not cool, man. (laughs) Anyway, and so Willow uh, feels like shit as they blatantly bail to get drinks, but it's obviously because she doesn't want to talk. Yeah, they don't get drinks so much as just, we're going to go over here now. We're going to go stand over here now. Yeah, and they just like (laughs) turn around. And luckily there's some demonic shenanigans going on. At Demonic this, shenanigans at this otherwise stupid ass <laughs> lame glow stick party. Hey, they were about to have naked fucking limbo. <laughs> they were. Yeah, that. Well, I've it, never experienced naked limbo, but I kind of want to. It could go so many different ways. I know. That's <laughs> the excitement. It could go down. It could go up. It could go in. Oh, God. (laughs) Everyone loves a slinky. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, 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 man. A Mr. Bucket. (laughs) The balls pop out of my mouth. A Mr. Bucket. All right. All right. (laughs) Moving on. Naked limbo guy gets killed by a demon. It's the game of life. (laughs) Anyway, naked limbo guy gets his throat slit. He wastes four cups of perfectly good gin and Sprite. I find this very upsetting. You don't even like gin. I don't hate gin. Perfectly good in that it'll get you drunk. <laughs> I, why would you mix gin with Sprite? I mean, if you don't have tonic water, it seems like the next best thing. It's just I too guess. much sugar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cut back to the main party where Willow accidentally overhears Percy talking to his insecure girlfriend about how... Willow is a total nerd. 
an egghead and the king of the geek squad or something, which I'm sorry, she probably, well, no, the geek squad doesn't pay very well at all. Captain of the nerd squad. That's what he called her. Yeah. I, I'm a little perturbed by Willow's response here just because Willow, you fucking know that you're a nerd. For fuck's sake. Yeah, when has she not self-identified as a geek, at least? Like, I'm sorry, but nobody who knows they're a nerd gets offended by someone calling them a nerd. Yeah, I know I don't. I think it was more that it was coming from somebody that she did him a lot of good. She did. And he wouldn't have made it through high school if it wasn't for her without her help. But yeah, and her she, brains. She gets super, super sad and upset about it. And it's just really shitty for him to be using that and throwing her under the bus just to keep his personal codependent relationship rolling. And it's it's unfortunate that well, she had to it, overhear that. It's not like we didn't already know that he was a dumbass, but yeah, it's neither here nor there. But yeah. it makes her feel shitty. Yeah, and she gets super shitty and sad and. It, Goes to a dark place, literally. <laughs> um, finds a dark room, walks over to the dark bed, lays down on the dark bed. Then the lights come on and she finds a dead body. Yeah, how did the lights come on? Well, it was pre- previously established that that whole dorm had the power out. And they were throwing a party because the power was out. Oh. And that this dorm specifically threw a party at any possible event as buffy said very important to have those days that end in y parties and if the somebody sneezed party yes yeah okay okay that makes perfect sense then so yeah the power comes back on willow finds a dead body there's a fucking symbol carved into his chest mm-hmm. you'd think she'd be okay by about this kind of thing by now <laughs> i mean i don't think she's been turned into a sociopath just yet So (laughs) she's still more shaken by the nerd thing throughout the rest of the episode. I'm dating. I am having serious dating with a werewolf. And I'm studying witchcraft and and killing vampires. It's like a drug. Cut to Spander's basement. Yes, where Xander returns. (laughs) I love that. He walks in and we get this very... (laughs) I love this fake out. It's very eerie. Spike's voice in the background. We don't know what's happening. He says, don't look at me. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's going on, Spike? What happened? What's wrong? What are you doing? <laughs> Turns around and Spike is wearing Xander's clothes. You don't really w- realize how ridiculous Xander's wardrobe is until you see it on Spike. Right? <laughs> Like, oh my god, you dress like Ace Ventura. What is going on? Oh my god. Yeah. Which, it's weird that this is legitimate proof that there are people who are just Hawaiian shirt kind of guys. Yeah. Spike is not one of them. No, not even close. Honestly, it's probably because he's just too damn pale. Right? Like... You you really shouldn't wear a Hawaiian shirt unless you can tan. Absolutely. I That's funny. I actually saw an interview with James Marsters one time where he was talking about that was the hardest part of the role for him because he loves going to the beach, but he had to avoid the sun as much as possible um, because he needed to be pale for this role. Oh, man. And he fucking lives in California. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I couldn't fucking imagine that. You live in California but and you love the beach, but you just... Fuck you. You play a vampire in a movie. <laughs> uh-huh. So that's like four or five oh, years fuck. of his life. Plus the season of Angel where you <sighs> just, nope, sorry. Um, For me, I'd have been like, oh, no, I have to only be awake at night <laughs> right. and go hide out in air conditioned <laughs> basements and play pool. <laughs> that's awful. Right. Here at Beer with Buffy, we are fans of the darkness. Not real big fans of that big burning ball of plasma in the sky. Well, the older I get, the more I do appreciate getting some sun. But, you know, there's there's vitamin D supplements for a reason. It's fine. (laughs) Everything's fine. (laughs) 
So Xander's getting fed up with Spike's overly demanding spoiled baby shit and actually kind of makes him feel bad here. Yeah. But Spike obviously cannot let this kind of thing rest and he spends the rest of the episode trying to get back at them like the petty douche he is that we all know and love. No, my favorite part though, because Xander's like, you know what? I know I can kick your ass because you can't do anything. But you know what, Spike? You're just not worth it. And that fucking comment from Xander saying, I know I can kick your ass and you can't do anything about it, but fuck you, I don't feel like it, is the big fucking windfall comment that just floors Spike the rest of the goddamn episode. Yeah, basically. Like, as if he didn't already feel thoroughly emasculated, Xander just went and took the last little shred of dignity he could have possibly had in this scenario. Very much so. So cut back to the party where Buffy finally shows up. EMTs are taking the body away. Buffy shows up. Willow tells Buffy about stuff going on and the symbol in the chest. And they leave to go talk to Giles. And that's pretty much that. And I thought it was interesting that Willow's like, there was a dead body on the bed next to me. And Buffy didn't even question why she was in bed at a college party. Right? She just let that one whiff right past her head. And was like, eh, probably better that way not to dwell on it. (laughs) She's an adult. She can do whatever she wants. So Riley and Forrest's dorm room, you know, bedroom, wherever the hell they are. They're in like a frat house. Yeah, they're in a frat house. But I think they share a room. Yeah. Or at the very least, they fucking are playing a game of basketball by one of those little like door hangy plastic basketball hoops. Yeah. I always wanted one of those as a kid, but I never got one. They're cheap as hell, too. Like, that should be... I don't, I don't see why that would be such a hard thing to acquire. But, yeah, the little squishy basketball with the net on the door. And I just have to say, Forrest is taking the fucking game they're playing a bit seriously. Way <laughs> too seriously. <laughs> Riley is still very much stuck on the whole Buffy situation. And <laughs> Forrest is irritated about it. I think Forrest is a little jelly. Right? It's like, you're always talking about Buffy. God, why aren't you talking about me? I have pecs. Look at my pecs. <laughs> the third guy, I can never fucking remember his name. He comes in, gets hit in the head with a basketball. Oh, that fucking guy. Nobody yeah. cares. Um, he tells him that there was a murder and Riley immediately goes into boss mode and he's going to recon the situation. That's about it. Yeah, Riley sets out to do some reconnaissance, sends Forrest to go report to Walsh, cut to Giles' house. Where Willow is still upset about Percy. (laughs) So Xander shares Willow's disheartened cries of displeasure at the dead guy in comparison to the high school drama of Percy's ingrateful meathead bullshit. Yep. Which, and that's the real problem here. Not that, I mean, you know, the dead guy, that's, that's awful, but... Let's talk about this Percy thing. So Willow draws the symbol that was carved on the dude's chest. And Giles is like, oh, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> did, did the, this is literally the amount of exposition we just got. Uh, it's the end of the world. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to have to stop it with a crossbow. Uh, you should do that. <laughs> yeah. That's as far as it really goes. Uh, there, There is some back and forth between... Giles and Buffy because she's like ha fucking told you and his response is one of my quotes of the day okay her line is I told you I said end of the world and you're like poo poo southern California poo poo I'm so very sorry my contrition completely dwarfs the impending apocalypse yeah which was an excellent response yes always so articulate thank you Giles cut to the (laughs) the same fucking mausoleum that we've used in like eight different episodes right except now they have this symbol that was carved into the dude's chest that willow copied down that was the only thing we didn't really mention about last scene yeah i did like how buffy is like all kind of pissy about like obviously it's something in the fucking cemetery that i see all the fucking time yeah well, I so- can't memorize anything else, but I can remember the fucking shit on the goddamn random shit that I'm seeing all the time in the cemetery. <laughs> Makes sense. It's a whole big rant. I enjoyed it. Well, I got her line directly here is, hmm, I wonder where I've seen this before. 
Where else? The place I spend most of my waking hours memorizing stuff on the sides of mausoleums. Big freaky cereal boxes of death. Which is <laughs> just an interesting way to describe uh, a crypt. Yeah. Why a cereal box? Oh, oh. Because it's filled with prizes. <laughs> it's filled with prizes and also... It's covered in recognizable logos. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> I just now got that. All right. We're quick as hell here on Beer with Buffy. Drink another one, fuckers. And they say young people don't learn anything in high school nowadays, but um, I've learned to be afraid. So what was the uh, story about that alligator? But immediately she hears something inside the mausoleum and it's a demon dude stealing some bones and they fight. The fight's nothing particularly impressive, but at one point Buffy gets slammed back first onto a fucking tombstone. I don't even know how they did that stunt without somebody breaking their back. Right? Like that looked painful. It, oh my God. It looked so fucking painful. And then she just does the little ninja flip up. And now Riley's standing there. He's like, oh, that was impressive. This is a neat little flippy thing you just did there. And I'm like, I know, right? You know, all he's thinking is, I'm totally going to hit that. <laughs> I'm very nubile. <laughs> yeah, yeah fucking perv so these two as far as i'm concerned are officially dating now he's been inaugurated with his very <laughs> first dramatic reading of broodiness <laughs> oh yes so basically the majority of this conversation goes thusly blah 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 we'll catch the demon no big deal we'll work together it'll be great isn't it cool how we know who each other are now thus begins the newest of the dramatic readings series. <laughs> Buffy starts us off with Riley. I just can't, can't talk, can't any of it. I can't be with you. It's just a huge black pit of a mistake, and I can't go there again. <laughs> again? You've dated me before? No. Look, I was involved. You don't know what my life is like, but I'm dying to find out. <laughs> dying? There is too much to risk. It's just doomed! I don't understand. Where is this coming from? I know you like me, and it's not like we don't have anything in common. But that's not enough. <laughs> Buffy, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> but I can feel my skin humming my hands, my every inch of me. I've never been this excited about anything before. <laughs> I'm not trying to scare you. And I'm not going to force myself onto you. But I'm by God not going to walk away because I think it might not work. I don't know what happened in your past. Pain, death, apocalypse. Do you know what a hell mouth is? <laughs> Do you have a fancy term for it? Because I went to high school on it for three years. <laughs> this is a job to you. It's not just a job. For me, it's a destiny. It's something that I can't change anything. Something that I can't escape. I'm stuck. <laughs> You're not in high school anymore. You can change things. Riley, no. I know it may seem. Riley, my answer is no. And scene. <laughs> it dragged on a little bit, but yeah, I, I liked it. It gave me a chance to really dig into... <laughs> The character. I, I noticed you threw a little bit of surfer into Riley there. <laughs> like broody surfer. Yeah. I liked it. Thank liked you. It. Thank you. That's that's my Oscar scene. <laughs> Someone give this man an Oscar. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I can't afford that. Cut to Giles and back and forth between the initiative with Riley as well. 
This is our new exposition library setup. Yep. This is where they establish that they're looking for and fighting a Viral demon. <laughs> I love the exchange here. I wrote it down. Okay. Giles goes, a Viral demon? Willow looks over. I hardly knew her. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Giles says, a Viral demon. Willow looks over and goes, ew. Xander looks over and says, I second that revulsion. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a good one. But yeah, this is where we find out that the demon was taking children's bones and they find the curse or the, the ritual or whatnot. And it it's the blood of a man, the bones of a child and the word of Valios. Yeah, there it is. Valios. And it's all and there's a sacrifice of three. So now they're on the lookout for three people getting sacrificed. Yep, yep, yep. Spoiler alert, it's not people. Anyway, um, Team Buffy and Team Riley debrief and deploy independently of one another. Uh, this is where we learn that the initiative can track through demon pheromones. Yeah, well, this one at least. But it definitely seems like something they've done before. Yep. Back to Spander's erotic basement. Yep, where Xander and Willow walk in on Spike trying to spike himself. And he's like, hey, need a little help with that? And he's like, oh, Xander. I wrote down his line because <laughs> I really fucking liked it. Yeah. Get it? Need a hand with that? Do you need me to insert things into your body, Spike? Like a, anyway. like a steak into your chest? Anyway. Or a, you know. Can I read my quote? <laughs> no. <laughs> what the fuck do you think this is? You got a whole fucking dramatic reading. Let me read my quote. <laughs> Fine. Spike is like tells Xander that it's no concern of his what he's doing. And but he specifically says, fag off. It's no concern of yours. And I wanted to touch on that. Fag off. Now, we have had a lot of fucking Britishisms that Spike mostly and Giles and Wesley have brought into this show. There's one I've never heard before. I'd never heard it before either. I think that's I think they made that one up. Yeah. <laughs> Xander's line is his too. For one thing, that's my shirt you're about to dust. And for another, we've shared a lot here. You should have trusted me enough to do it for you. <laughs> I see what he did there. <laughs> <laughs> and Willow's like, hey, and he says, what? He wants to die. I want to help. Well, oh, my God. This, this whole fucking scene is just gold. She's like, it's Uki. We know him. We can't just let him poof himself. And I'm like, ah, but he's a vampire. Ah, you guys love him. You know it. You just can't bring yourself they to love him. the spikey spike. They <laughs> just like the rest of us. So he's like, oh, but you can. You know, I'd drain you drier than the Sahara if I had half a chance. And besides, I'm beyond pathetic. Stuck in this basement, washing skivvies for a blighter I wouldn't have bothered to bite a few months ago. And <laughs> Xander again is like, hey! <laughs> uh, anyway, so he's self-conscious about whether he's scary or not. And Willow tries to make him feel better. He tells them to leave. Willow says they have to take him with them so he can't kill himself. Spike's like, oh, you go on. I won't do anything. I'll feel better now. Promise. <laughs> and uh, Xander's I, like... I think you're lying, Spike. <laughs> so Xander's like, think of the happy. If we don't find what we're looking for, we face an apocalypse. Really? You're not just saying that. <laughs> Fucking golden scene. Absolutely it really check it out again if you haven't seen this recently. And you're what? Shocked and disappointed? I'm evil. You should know better. You should know better than the attempt to fake the face of the world. That was pathetic. You should know better. You should know better than the attempt to fake the face of the world. a lot more with that. Yeah, fantastic day. Birds singing. Squirrels making lots of rotten little squirrels. Cut to downtown Sunnydale. Where Buffy and Riley run into each other. <laughs> yeah. Riley's broodiness is absolutely no match for the precedent Angel has set for him. Oh, he, God, no. He pushes it a little too hard this time. I, I'm telling you, Angel set up some fucking hurdles there. <laughs> like, those are hurdles no mortal man can handle. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, you're, you're, 
you're pretty badass, Riley, but you're no angel. <laughs> and so, yeah, trying to argue his way into Buffy's pants gets him fuck all nowhere in this scene. Well, and he blatantly calls her stupid. Yeah, and you know, I thought he was going to find a good way to backpedal on that and do that, flip it around and make it a flattering kind of stupid. No, kind of, he leans into it. He does. He leans into it in all the wrong ways. He, exactly. It's <laughs> kind of harsh. But, you know, kudos to Buffy for really shutting him down in this scene. And oh, why yeah. do I feel like I'm going to eat those words? <laughs> <sighs> I mean, so I almost <sighs> feel like he's right. But not for the right reasons. He's he's being a dickbag about it. She's not factoring in, or at least she's not letting herself factor in, that her thing with Angel had the ridiculous twist of, A, he was a vampire. Oh, and B, he was cursed to turn into an evil demon when she fucks him. Oh, yeah, that's kind of a problem. I mean, partly the problem here is Riley doesn't fucking know remotely the depth of her problems and she's using that against him and she's like you you don't know me and you don't know my situation and he is absolutely overstepping his boundaries in that regard but she's also giving him fuck all to go on i will however say i do appreciate the fact that riley's an optimist absolutely no i completely agreed with his sentiment of I am not going to just walk away from this because I think it might not work. I think that was the one golden boy line of that came out yeah. of Riley's mouth this episode before he just started pushing way too hard and yeah. going way too far with his shit. But the long and short of it, I felt, was that she's not ready one way or another and she doesn't want to mix work with pleasure and that's her own damn business. Yeah. Respect the lady's decision. No means no, fucker. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Well, in the dramatic reading scene, he even said, I'm not going to pressure you, but he's fucking trying to pressure her. But now he's pressuring her. Yeah. Bit of an ass. Yup. And I'm like, ah, ah, starting to find out why people don't like him. Yeah. Go on. Uh, so from there, we cut to the museum or outside the museum where Spike, Xander, and Willow have found nothing. Not even a syllable of Valios. Spike just drags them down into the pity party. Yeah, he goes full self-pity, definitely. He's like, which means I'm one step closer to melting in a sea of molten hellfire, yeah? <laughs> yep. Thus starts the scene of Spike's revenge. Because <laughs> he can't hurt anything with his fists, so he's got to hurt them with words. Specifically, he's got to hurt them with a very, very sharp fucking wit. Yep. And he, the way he sets this up is despicably brilliant, actually. Shall I say, big bad worthy. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got the mentality to be a big bad going on still. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. He calls them losers or something, and they're like, hey, we're not losers. You are. And he's like, I should think you would be glad to greet the end of your days. I mean, neither one of you is making much of a go at it. You, kids at your age, are going off to university. You've made it as far as the basement. And Red here, you couldn't even keep Dog Boy happy. You can take the loser out of high school, but... He doesn't want any pity from useless geeks. And they're like, hey, we're not worthless. We fight evil. And he's like, no, you don't. Buffy does. And they're like, no, uh, Buffy needs us. And he closes the deal here. Oh, it's a good one. Or you're just the same 10th grade losers you've always been. And she's too much of a softy to cut you loose. And he clicks his heels, walks the other way. Oh, man. With a big shit-eating grin on his face. The fucking, like, smirk grin that he gives just as he fucking turns to camera and walks away from him is just so, so pure. <laughs> pure evil. Pure self-satisfied asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it reminded me far too much of the remnants of my own past toxic friendships <laughs> that dragged me down. And I'm like, ugh, damn it, Spikey Spike, why do I have to like you so much? <laughs> Cut to Giles' house. Where Giles finds the word of Valios. I'm like, well, first he finds it in a book. <laughs> yes, and his response is, oh, as usual, 
dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bother. <laughs> That was classic Giles. Oh my god, it was so fucking good. I think that was that was uh, my top Giles moment of the episode. Yes. Absolutely. Oh. As usual. Dear. I think my favorite part about this episode is that they're they're making the the demon plot take a back seat. It's oh, yeah. it's kind of a it's a half meta episode. It is. I really enjoy that. And so he runs over to this jewelry box and finds it immediately. With a fucking ton of other talismans. It's like, <laughs> he's just got a whole box of them. Oh, look at me. I have all these talismans. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> oh, shit. He grabs his coat and tries to fuck off immediately, which is smart. Yeah. But they're already in his house. And this is the moment where we find out there's actually three of them. Three of them, because we thought there was only one. Uh, Turns out, no. Guess I'm just racist. Because they all look alike to me. (laughs) To be fair, they look alike. (laughs) That's, no, that's racist, Rex. (laughs) They're demons. We don't have to be nice to (laughs) demons. Demons aren't people. So, punch a Nazi. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Cut to commercials so we don't have to watch Giles getting his ass kicked. Yeah. Cut back and Giles explains that he bought it at an estate sale, took one quick look at it and thought it was a knockoff. Yeah. We have no idea how Giles knows this, but he knows that they are on their way to the Hellmouth to do a ritual to open it again. Everyone's going back to high school. Yep. That's the theme of this episode. Back to high school. Much like my work life, but that's more like back to middle school. <laughs> Cut to Sunnydale High School. Which has not been torn down yet, and Christ, someone needs to get over there with a goddamn bulldozer. It really needs to get demolished. It's like, they're not fixing it. That's not happening. It's still filled with demon guts. Yeah. (laughs) I like how when they they walk into Sunnydale High, Buffy's like, why the fuck is Spike here? And Willow's like, he was going to kill himself. And Buffy's like, and that's a problem? (laughs) Yeah, she's like... Willow's the only one. The only one worried about it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah she's yeah and buffy's like well it's not like he can fight and i'm like oh that's the whole setup of this episode yeah all righty yeah no they would all miss him and so as they're walking down the halls also you know james mercer's probably signed a contract for the whole season at least yeah so they have to wait at least that long to kill him yep and so as they're walking down the halls they come across to mayor meat <laughs> And can you imagine how fucking awful that would smell? How vile. Oh, what's what's the word? Um, putrid. Yeah, putrid's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes down to it, rotten meat is one of those things that I just can't fucking deal with. Quick side story: When I was in Boise this summer, it was it was a really hot summer, and we parked the moving van in a Walmart parking lot right next to an RV. And I was standing outside the the moving van and I was like, what the fuck is that smell? Is there a dead body around here? There literally must be some roadkill on the street or something. And this guy pokes his head out of the RV next to us and he's like, oh, hey, that's just me. Don't worry about it. I got some, uh, some bad meat in the cooler here that I haven't thrown away. And I'm like, oh, Okay, good to know that you're not dead in there. That sounds like a serial killer. Yeah. (laughs) That sounds exactly like... Exactly that... I'm pretty sure you met a serial killer. Exactly that thought went through my head. I was like, somebody's hiding a body in there. That's very nice. Bye. Yeah, I was like, (laughs) I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Thank you for the information on how that is definitely not a human in... That's fucking terrifying. In your RV, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's fucking terrifying. <laughs> I don't know that he was a serial killer. It could have been his first kill. Oh god. You know, we don't so know. Disturbing. <laughs> Buffy, you made some bad choices. You just might have to live with some consequences. This isn't over. If I have to, I'll go all the way to the mayor. So yeah, they come across the ritual and they're confused because there's no one there that they're going to sacrifice. Yeah. Time to fight some demons. Mm Mm-hmm. Big old fight. Time for a bit of rough and tumble. And so (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Xander and Willow run in there and they snatch up the the bag of children's bones and the jar of blood of a man's blood or whatever. Yeast. The blood of a man. Oh, that's difficult to acquire. <laughs> you want the blood of a man? I'll get you the blood of a man tonight. <laughs> Oh God! Give me a half hour to find a needle. Um, it's like that would be harder to find than you know being able to get the actual blood. Anyway, they're fighting. I loved Xander's line. He's getting punched in the gut by one of the demons, and his response is, "You're picking on the wrong guy, dude. I had a lot of practice with my lunch money." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I heard something about his lunch money, but I didn't catch the whole line. I just kind of let it go. So I'm glad you got it. My favorite part, though, is he like hits the, the demon a few times and the demon gets the bag of bones back from him and then runs and jumps in the hole. And he's like, OK, I guess I won. Guess that means I win. <laughs> yeah, I liked that one, too. And no, this is when we learned that the demons are the sacrifice. Yeah. And I called it. I saw that coming as soon as they walked in the room. I was like, I don't think they're looking for people at the moment anyway so here we get spike's wonderful moment of catharsis oh it's so good where he punches a demon and he's really expecting that chip to kick in and fuck him over and he's like wait holy shit i can hurt demons and he just wails on the he's fucker. just like i have so much violence that i need to dull out he's right got now some frustrations <laughs> And this poor bastard demon <laughs> is the butt end of the whole ordeal. Yeah. And uh, so Spike very quickly just became a massive asset to the, the Scooby team as an extra fighter who's also a fucking immortal. Yep. You know, with the exception of sunlight and beheading wood. and stakes. Yeah, wood. Oh, no. Not trees. <laughs> Don't put the trees in my heart. You know what? That kills people, too. It does. Um, funny story. <laughs> Spike kicks the demon's ass and, like, picks him up. And Willow and Xander are like, no, don't throw him in the hole. And Spike throws the demon in the hole. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. You're right. It's like, well, you know, that didn't work. Demon go down the hole. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is such a deep, deep pull. <laughs> A little later, go down the hole. <laughs> I pushed a button. <laughs> What's that? Fucking tiny tunes? Tiny tunes. Tiny tunes. Oh, my God. There you go, kids. Oh, we just dated ourselves so painfully. <laughs> hey, when other people fucking don't want to date you, you date yourself. Plucky fucking duck. <laughs> Demon, go down the hole. <laughs> and then... Some of the building collapses a bit and some debris knocks Spike the fuck out. Yep. And Xander, of all people, runs over to pick him up and get him out of harm's way. Aw. Xander likes the banter. They really do care about each other. They, they like to banter. That's why they fuck later. They don't. In Spander's erotica, you know, it's a different universe. Well, it's, <laughs> it's a fan fiction, whatever. And then all of a sudden, Riley shows up. He does. He fucks his way right into the scene and joins the fight. So the demon crawls his way into the hole and Buffy's like, I'm going in. And then Riley's got this stupid fucking bat clip on his belt. <laughs> right. That's way longer oh my God. and way stronger than it reasonably ever should have yeah. or could have been. It must be space age technology. Yep. All righty. And he clips it on her belt and he's like, you're coming back. <laughs> It's so dramatic. <laughs> and she jumps down the hole. And I'm sorry, but I just, I have a fucking gripe. I have a fucking gripe. And physics? Physics. <laughs> T all fucking TV shows and movies and shit do this all the fucking time. Dude is falling and someone jumps after them and fucking can somehow catch up. And it's like, you're falling. You b are both falling at the same speeds. Unless you somehow can affect the aerodynamics of each other in very specific ways, you're going to keep falling at the same speeds. And I'm sorry, but if the demon is trying to kill himself, he's going to fucking streamline how he's falling and fall faster. Like, there's no way Buffy catches the demon. World ends. Unless he got caught on, like, a ledge or something. Then that just fucking sucks to be in. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, no. I'm going to end the world! <laughs> Ow. Yeah. 
Congratulations, what? you're stupid too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, or well, it'd have to be to be like, let's let's do a ritual, guys. We'll end the world. Oh, how are we gonna do that? We're gonna kill ourselves in a hole. Well, we need a third. How about Clumsy Jim? <laughs> Why do they call him Clumsy Jim? Uh, he's no, no reason. He's not very good at falling down holes. <laughs> he's never really. Oh, that, that won't apply. <laughs> it can't. I mean, we do have to fall down a hole, but how can you really fuck that up? More than once, you know. <laughs> <laughs> on that fateful day for clumsy jim but yeah she uh jumps in after pulls the demon out like he wraps the cord around some rebar yeah which completely negates her body weight falling at the rate of gravity and having to suddenly catch on his belt yeah uh, whatever and then, like he pulls her up way too fucking easy yeah, he barely even pulled her up, and she's making it back out of the hole. I don't know. It's horse shit. But anyway. I know this sounds like we're hardcore nitpicking this scene, but they have done better with this kind of bullshit in this show. Not just in general, but like in this show, they have done better than this. This scene is bullshit dumb. What should have happened is she should have grabbed his ankle as he was sliding in and she was hanging by a thread or like her foot caught on something. And then Riley clipped the thing on the belt and, and then reels her yeah, in exactly. with the demon. That's what should have gone down. And that would have been more intense too. It would have. This falling thing, it just, it made absolutely no sense and it took me out of the scene. They could have changed her line to let me go. I'm going in after him. I'll never let you go. Or some and, shit. Or like, and no, he could have been like, no, you're coming back. And then still clipped the thing on her belt. Yeah. Like they they could have fucking made it work and still work, like made fucking iota more sense than it did. Absolutely. fucking lutely so they step out into the hallway with the demon, and I don't know if they cuffed him or what. And, I think they uh, just gave him to Riley. Here, here you can have him. <laughs> so, and now his cover's just completely blown, because the whole Scooby gang figures it no, out. No, he was playing paintball. Oh, you're right. Excuse me. I. <laughs> <laughs> and then Riley looks at Spike, and he's like, wait, don't I know you? And Spike's response... <laughs> Hold on, I, I gotta try this. Yes. Me? No, no, sir. I'm just an old pal of Xander's here. Hold on, <laughs> I just have to laugh at the sheer hilarity of an American person playing a British person who is faking a bad American accent. And it's so good. <laughs> a woman <laughs> pretending to be a man pretending to be a woman? How garish. You remember that? No, I don't know. There's a movie about that. It's the exact same kind of situation. An American pretending to be a British person pretending to be an American. No, it's it's meta as fuck. But Marsters fucking pulls it off. He really he's does. Genius. And Riley's too giddy about Buffy to really pay attention, I guess. Yeah. One line from Willow as they're leaving the school. Everything seems so small. More charred and ruiny, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she wasn't wrong. No. No, she wasn't. Yes, it's time to listen. The good guys are always stalwart and true. The bad guys are easily distinguished by their beauty walls or black hats. Uh, we always defeat them and save the day. No one ever dies and everybody lives happily ever after. Liar. Then, yeah, then we cut back to, do to Riley's room. And did you notice the poster on Riley's door? I didn't. The title said Types of Balls. And it was all like baseball, wiffle ball, golf ball, tennis ball, etc. Soccer ball, basketball. And at the bottom it says, too bad there's only two that matter. Uh, uh, it's the poster equivalent of truck nuts. Oh my God, <laughs> truck nuts. Yeah. Hey, America, stop it. Just stop it. Yeah, Rex disapproves of your activities. Do not be proud of your genitalia. Like, we know your truck is your penis. Nor should you represent it on your vehicle. 
So uh, Riley's all like, oh, what was me? It's the end of the world. Everybody knows about me. Uh, I should have just given my, th I should have just given them my security code and rank. And Buffy's like, you have a security code and rank? Uh, no. <laughs> Fuck. Like, like it's the sexiest <laughs> thing he could have fucking said. Like she's like, I want to take my clothes off right now. <laughs> I forgive everything. And then she makes out with him. Yeah, she does. Kissy, kissy, kissy. Yeah, completely backpedals. And I mean, it looked like a good kiss. Those two know how to fucking make out. Yeah. I'm a little jealous. I think it's all Sarah Michelle Geller, though, because she effectively, everyone she makes out with on the show, she does it very well. Oh, come on. He's a very pretty man. You're not wrong. Give him a little bit of credit. Sure, she's she's probably leading. But anyway, back to Spander's basement. <laughs> I love this bit. Xander and Willow are are pretty cuddly watching TV, but yeah. it's friend it's friend cuddly cuz I I really wonder how Anyanka the demon girlfriend of revenge from hell would feel about that. Right. And where the fuck is she been this whole time? She had an episode off, I guess. Yeah. Well, she's not in the credits yet. Well, and she's surprisingly Clearly much more secure than Percy's girlfriend. Right. Good honor for that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Spike is like, no, no, we don't need to watch TV. We need to go fight demons. This is this is just an amazing speech. I'm just going to do the whole speech. Do it. do it. What's this? Sitting around watching the telly while there's evil still afoot. That's not very industrious of you. I say we go out there and kick a little demon ass. And they're just sitting there staring at him all wide eyed and just what the fuck is going on? He's like, what? Can't go without your Buffy. Is that it? Two chicken. Let's find her. She is the chosen one after all. Come on. Vampires. Grr, nasty. Let's annihilate them for justice and the safety of puppies and <laughs> Christmas, right? <laughs> let's fight that evil let's kill something and i'm like there it is he just wants to do harm he just wants to, to kill things but it's for good hey you know what <laughs> so he's a semi-domesticated chained animal okay <laughs> and just the funniest part of this speech is it fades to black and it says the director's name or whoever or something and and then he's like oh come on <laughs> <laughs> After it's faded to black. <sighs> and that that's it. Gerarg. Gerarg. Is this for me? I must be ready. I need my strength. strength. Give, 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 give me more! Night, I shall give, walk give, in give, here. Give, 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 give. Hold on. You've got something here. Uh. We got our spikety spike back. Yeah. Woo! In full force. Exactly. I Well, not full force, but well, full but enough. No more whiny fucking spike. I'm I was so getting sick so of them. sick of it. I'm so sick of them taking away Spike's awesomeness, but I really love it when we get it back. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I guess it's working. And I mean, we do have one more little bout of non-true spikety spike coming up when he goes crazy after getting his soul back oh yeah you're right well but other than that he's pretty much back yeah for the most part i can't wait to see what kind of shenanigans he gets into after this yeah so did you like the episode i'm not i'm really tempted to say i fucking loved this episode but really i really enjoyed this episode I just thought it was okay. Yeah, it, it wasn't anything super special or like extraordinarily significant to the season arc, but you know it doesn't have to be. I enjoyed the meta ness and yeah. how they how they're able to make elements take a back seat to emphasize other things and have fun with it. Yeah, this was a definitely a lighter note episode, and they kind of needed one after Hush. Hush was heavy as fuck. Yeah, Hush yeah. was intense. And they're like, you know what, guys? Let's get a breather and just have a little bit of fun with this. Well, and this was fairly a little bit of a drag, honestly. 
the scenes with Buffy and Riley arguing, I'm just like, here we go. And on top of that, all the fucking hardcore mopiness of Spike. Yeah. Well, it only took half a fucking season for her to find a boyfriend to have deep existential arguments with again right and i'm like yeah this is how i know they're really together now (laughs) congratulations you're part of the team now the true telling of buffy's relationships is when they can achieve dramatic readings damn fucking right (laughs) did you have a quote of the day i did have a quote of the day so i gotta say that my quote of the day is unquestionably oh as usual dear (laughs) <laughs> excellent good choice <laughs> the delivery is fucking beautiful and i just i like that it hints that giles is very accepting of the the routine of it yes well i think what whichever writer wrote that if it wasn't joss whedon himself i don't know but whoever wrote that that was their signature sign off on by the way we know that we're taking it easy on the demon plot so that we can emphasize the Spike plot and yep. the Buffy and Riley plot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's the end of the world. It's like they're <laughs> okay, purposefully yeah. going too far with it for comedic effect, and yeah. it worked. So what was your quote of the day? I think I got to give it to Xander because Xander's like, you were trying to stake yourself, and, Xander's, <laughs> and Spike's like, this is no concern of yours. Xander says, is two. For one thing, that's my shirt you're about to dust. For another, we've shared a lot here. You should have trusted me enough to do it for you. And that's just fucking funny. Yeah. I think that encompasses perfectly Spike and Xander's bantery relationship of hatred, which yeah. was very similar, actually, to Xander's relationship to Angel as well. Well, yeah. As it says... In the fucking music that we have. Doesn't like vampires. (laughs) I'm going to go out on a limb here and say they're not good. No, they're not good. Yeah. I can't wait to see if we get some buddy cop episodes with Xander and Spike. I have to say, though, an addendum to your quote is his follow up was, what? He wants to die and I want to (laughs) help. What's the problem? I don't see what the problem is here. Oi. So this has been another episode of Beer with Buffy. Damn right it has. As always, you can find us on Facebook. Find us on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. We've been a lot more active on Twitter than on Facebook. Facebook's Um, been picking up a little bit. A little bit. We We always fail to mention we have a Facebook group specifically set up to discuss episodes and it needs more traffic. Shout shout out to the handful of you who have been getting more active on that site. Yeah, we fucking love it. We love interacting with our fans, and that's a great way to interact with people. You can also review us on iTunes. It's the number one way to help us grow our podcast. If you'd like to support us financially, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.beerwithbuffy.com. If you'd like to purchase some merch and wear our logo on your person or carry it on a mug or... Stick stick around your laptop. You can find that at store.beerwithbuffy.com. You can email us if you'd like to tell us anything. The email is beerwithbuffy at gmail.com. And of course, as always, you can get leave us a voicemail or send us a text at 269-743-0783. And then finally, Thank you very much to Benjamin Alexander and Reggie Page for all our transition, opening, closing music. This has been Beer with Buffy. I'm Rex. I'm Josh. Have a good night. Have a brew. You are the Slayer. Lives depend upon you. I make allowances for your years, but I expect a certain amount of responsibility, and instead of which you would enslave yourself to this, this cult. You don't like the color? You have a sacred birthright. You were chosen to destroy vampires, not to wave pom-poms at people. Why can't you people just leave me alone?
my opinion, my opinion to your common sense. Common sense. Common sense. What? I will sleep. you by. Suck you by. Everything you've ever dreaded was under your bed, but told yourself couldn't be by the light of day. One girl in all the world. Common sense. One girl in all the common world. Sense. All the world. It was a bit um, British, wasn't it? Wait, what have we done? Why are we watching this? <laughs>